Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for being with us today. Our broadcast today centers on the religion of Islam. We're doing a series right now. In fact, we're in show number six in this series entitled Answering Islamic Apologists. Now, for our first-time viewers, a lot of people don't know what the word apologist means. It doesn't mean someone that's apologizing for something. It basically means someone who's a defender of their faith. It means someone who uh, proclaims that his particular religion, religion and his religious views are true, and uh, they, are, they will stand the test. And he also defends his religion against other people who attack his religion. And he sets forth the propositions with uh, reasonable arguments, as he would, he would think, and, and evidence, uh, facts, and so forth, to prove that his religion is true. That's what mainly an apologist does. And uh, what we're going to do on this show is uh, try to answer Islamic apologists who uh, make their claims. In fact, uh, I might as well bring this out now. I, the, the show uh, centers, the show centers on uh, Islamic teachings by Dr. Jamal Badawi. He's one of these Islamic apologists I was just talking about. Uh, we're using his tape series, this one being uh, Package 8, called Series K, Jesus, Beloved Messenger of Allah. And uh, what we have here are 16 hours, just in this particular album alone, of uh, Dr. Jamal Badawi's tapes, where he, from an apologetical point of view, is trying to prove the Islamic perspective that it is true and that Christianity is false and the Jesus of the Christians is false and the Jesus of Islam is true and what we're doing here in this program is mainly answering Dr. Jamal Badawi although we will be dealing with some of the other Islamic apologists as well in this series but uh, the main focus of our our program is to deal with uh, what Dr. Badawi has said on his television broadcast like I said these are soundtracks from his television shows and try to answer those arguments and accusations that he makes against the Christian faith. And joining me on this program to do just this is uh, my brother in Christ and also our director of research for Christian Answers, Steve Morrison. Steve, great to have you here. Well, thank you, Larry. And uh, just as Dr. Jamal Badawi, and I'll put him back here between us, but just as Dr. Badawi is an apologist for his faith, uh, we are Christian apologists following the command of Jude 3, to uh, earnestly contend for the faith or to get in there and fight or wrestle or grapple, as the Greek says, for that word contend in Jude 3, the little book right before Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other passages, 1 Peter 3.15, uh, uh, I think of Philippians 1, uh, verse 17. It says uh, to be set for the defense and confirmation of the gospel. You have uh, many scriptures that tell us as Christians we are to defend our faith from those who would attack it and also give reasonable answers why we believe this faith. Not that we blindly believe it, but are there reasons why we believe it? Is it and is it reasonable? Is it, are there facts and evidence that, that would substantiate why we believe what we believe or is it just a blind faith? And we as Christian apologists, not apologizing, but giving reasonable answers and defending our faith, uh, have been provided with a wealth of evidences by God to prove the Christian faith from all kinds of points, from manuscript evidence, from archaeological evidence, from prophecies that you find throughout the Bible. People make a big deal about that, that guy from way back in medieval times, Nostradamus. But Nostradamus doesn't have anything on the Bible and on the prophets of God or on Jesus Christ. If you want fulfilled Bible prophecy, 100%, you go to the Bible. This is a quick recap from show number five in this series on answering Islamic apologists. In the previous show, Dr. Badawi made charges concerning the early Christian church being non-Trinitarian. Badawi is 170 years out of date on the Trinity, and more out of date than that on the deity of Christ. We first find the term Trinity in the writings of Theophilus of Antioch, 168 to 181, 188 AD. The curious thing about this reference is that he mentions the Trinity assuming the readers were already familiar with the term. Another early church father, Irenaeus, a disciple of Ignatius, also wrote about the deity of Christ. Early church non-Trinitarian? Definitely not. Is this a Unitarian statement? Quote, 
As a king sends his son, who is also a king, so sent he him. As God, he sent him. As to men, he sent him. As a savior, he sent him. This 130 A.D. by Diognetus, a disciple of the apostle, in his letter to Mathetes. Badawi's endorsement of Arius. Badawi's endorsement of Arius is curious, as we were under the impression Badawi was not a heretical Muslim. Arius believed Jesus was a god, though a lesser god than the Father. And Arians had various views of Jesus being of like, though not identical, substance with the Father. Bishop Alexander was against Arius, but Athanasius had a greater role. Badawi's Council of Nicaea. Somehow, Badawi thinks the council had 270 different gospels there. That is actually the number of people who were there. In Badawi's version, the council approved of the Trinity despite there being no conclusive evidence for the doctrine. This would make no sense in reality. The historical documents themselves prove Badawi wrong. Badawi says the council approved that the Holy Spirit was God despite, allegedly, no evidence for this. Once again, Badawi expects his audience to remain ignorant by simply believing what he says. Not 270 Gospels. Badawi says there were 270 different Gospels without any evidence to substantiate his claim. Against Badawi, Irenaeus, living 120 to 202 A.D., wrote much earlier, quote, she, the church, also believes these points of doctrine, just as if she had but one soul. For the churches which have been planted in Germany do not believe or hand down anything different, nor do those in Spain, nor do those in Gaul, nor those in the East, nor those in Egypt, nor those in Libya, nor etc., etc., etc. The doctrine was the same throughout the world. Recap of Badawi's attacks on the Apostle Paul. Badawi accuses Paul of being a heretic and an innovator of non-gospel material. Badawi accuses Paul of having a false religion compared to that of Jesus because Paul was influenced by Hellenistic philosophy and ancient mystery cult religions. Badawi has adopted a view that was popular among Bible critics, particularly between 1890 and 1940, namely that Paul's theology was syncretistic, i.e., not one held by the original disciples and Jesus himself, but a theology that evolved and borrowed from pagan religions. Badawi's line of argumentation against Paul is now well over 60 years outdated and is no longer seriously considered by informed scholars. Those who would like scholarly research dealing with this issue are invited to read the Gospel and the Greeks by Ronald H. Nash, published 2003 by PNR Publishing out of New Jersey. Selections from Hellenistic Philosophy. Gordon H. Clark, 1940, Appleton Century Crofts. The Christology of the New Testament. Oscar Coleman, 1963, Westminster Press, Philadelphia. The Background of the New Testament and its Eschatology. W.D. Davies and D. Dobb, 1956, Cambridge University Press, The Origin of Paul's Gospel. Seung Kim, 1982, Erdman's, Grand Rapids, Michigan, The Origin of Paul's Religion. J. Gresham Macon, 1925, Macmillan, New York. Badawi's Claims About Early Christian Church History. Badawi's interpretation of early Christian church history and the reliability of the New Testament records is so flawed as to be laughable from a scholarly perspective. Those who would like further information on this issue are invited to read The Apostolic Fathers, J.B. Lightfoot and J.R. Harmer, 1989, Baker Bookhouse, Grand Rapids, Michigan. The New Testament Documents, Are They Reliable? by F.F. F. Bruce, 1960, InterVarsity Press, Grove, Illinois. Why I Believe the Bible by John F. MacArthur, 1980. Regal Books, Glendale, California. The Foundation of Biblical Authority, 
James M. Boyce, 1978, Zondervan, Grand Rapids, Michigan. The Inspiration and Authority of the Bible, B.B. Warfield, 1970, PNR Publishing, New Jersey. Archaeology and the Religion of Israel, W.F. Albright, 1956, J. Hopkins University Press, Baltimore, Maryland. Redating the New Testament by John A.T. Robinson, 1976, Westminster Press, Philadelphia, PA. See also the Anti-Nicene Fathers, 1981, Erdman's Grand Rapids, Michigan. Well, let's go to tape 13. That's where we are in this series in show number six. Uh, Dr. Badawi's tape is entitled Other Major Councils and Later Councils. And as you see on the screen, uh, some information that came from Dr. Badawi's tapes, and then we'll just uh, briefly discuss these things and move on to his next tape. Of course, we'll take more time if, if we feel like it deserves more time. But anyway, point A, after the Council of Nicaea in 325, the second major council of the church was held in 381 A.D. in Constantinople. This council reiterated that the Holy Spirit was divine. B, the third major council was held in Ephesus in 431 A.D. to clarify the divinity and humanity of Jesus and to condemn uh, Nestorius. C, the fourth major council was held in Chalcedon in 451 A.D., which sided with the theory that Jesus had two natures, but those two natures are united without change, without division, and without separation. Badaway says this doctrine is blasphemy because it is saying God died on the cross. D. The Fifth Council was the Second Council of Constantinople, which took place in 553 A.D., and Badaway goes on to list a few more councils and conferences. E. Badaway talks about how the rise of Islam comes along to clarify things. Badawi says the Council of Nicaea and others were, quote, innovations, end quote. And F. Badawi lists sins of the Christian church, including icon worship, selling forgiveness, otherwise known as indulgences. He says no one can forgive sins, including Jesus. Uh, and he mentions the Crusades, where the Crusaders, you know, attacked in, uh, the Muslim lands and tried to take uh, Jerusalem. Badawi says the Muslim rulers were more humane during these crusades than the crusader overlords. So basically, what we have here in tape 13 of Dr. Badawi's uh, uh, soundtrack from his television show in this particular series is he's trying to show all these councils of the Christian church, Council of Nicaea, Council of Constantinople, the Second Council, and so forth. And then he's trying to show the incredible confusion that the Christian church had to go through by these things. And... Uh, he argues that, well, they're arguing about the two natures of Christ over here, and uh, they're, they're suddenly they're coming up with this idea that uh, the Holy Spirit mentioned in the, in the Scriptures is divine, and uh, they had to have a council on that, but there was disagreements, and they had to argue, and it was kind of majority rule vote, and there were pressure under the, the, uh, the uh, Roman emperors and, and some of their other hierarchical councils that were... Uh, exerting political influence on these councils. And basically, to make a long story short, he's trying to make these councils look like there's a lot of confusion going on and, and, and it's, a, it's kind of a mess. And what they really needed was Islam to come along uh, sometime after these councils and clarify everything. He's ba basically he's trying to make these councils look like they're a confused mess and, uh, and Islam is going to come along and clarify things. And then he also points out, you know, the problems in the church about icon worship and, as you mentioned, the crusades and the terrible things they did, you know, slaughtering people and, and all the terrible things you've seen in history dealing with that. Uh, and, and he tries to show how Islam is the answer to all this confusion and uh, errors and, and these, these weird ideas like the Council of Nicaea comes up with with the, the uh, doctrine of the Trinity and then these other councils saying the Holy Spirit is God and Jesus is God. And uh, so basically what we have here is just a, uh, a, a whitewash, you might say, of early church history in these councils and how they're coming up basically from Badawi's point of view with false doctrine, things that aren't true, things that can be easily refuted by any Unitarian out there who doesn't believe what the what these uh, innovative uh, scriptures that the Apostle Paul brought in and these other forgeries that the Gospels have brought in from either someone who claimed to be John or someone who claimed to be Mark or someone who claimed to be uh, Matthew. Uh, and he makes those kind of arguments and shows how the validity of Islam 
is what we need. Well, obviously, we would totally disagree with what Dr. Badawi is saying here. Constantinople, 381 A.D. Lying to the Holy Spirit is lying to God, according to Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 Acts chapter 13, verse 2, and Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 through 32 also declare the Holy Spirit to be God, among other verses. Long before this council, Irenaeus, living 120 to 202 A.D., wrote, quote, Know thou that every man is either empty or full, for if he has not the Holy Spirit, he has no knowledge of the Creator. He has not received Jesus Christ, the life of he knows not the Father who is in heaven. End quote. Against Heresies 3.16 Constantinople 2, 553 A.D. Early Islam had an analog to councils also, with Karajites, followers of Ali, etc., except these are not called peaceful councils. They were bloody battles. Unlike Christian councils, Muslim councils many times depended on which Islamic doctrinal side had the better general with a victorious army. Islam clarifies and councils innovate. Selective semantics. Uthman's standardizing of the Quran was not done in a council fashion either. The major doctrines in these councils have their basis in the Bible, though some of the later councils did add other traditions. Many human traditions were added to Christianity in the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches. While we do not approve of these additions, Muslims should understand this because they have had Hadiths added to Islam centuries after Muhammad walked the earth. Yes, he, he mentions the right dates and times of these councils. Yes, the church did say that the Holy Spirit is God, and there's plenty of references for that. In fact, uh, just to be brief on this, because we've got a lot of material to cover, uh, the uh, Holy Spirit, from when you look in the Scripture, the Holy Spirit has a mind. That's in Romans 8.27. Uh, there's the infinite comprehension of the Holy Spirit. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2.11. The foreknowledge of the Spirit, that's mentioned in John 16.13. The power of the Spirit, Romans 15.13. The love of the Spirit, Romans 15.30. The determinant will of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that determines what gifts you, you get. The charismatic gifts, for instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 11. That the Holy Spirit creates life and gives it. That's in Job chapter 33 verse 4 and also Psalm 33.6. Uh, the Holy Spirit strives with the ungodly, ungodly Genesis 6.3. And I have an entire list here that the Holy Spirit is God. You get that in like Acts 13.2 and also Acts chapter 5. Where with the, uh, in, in the early verses there dealing with Ananias and Sapphira where Peter says, you haven't, you, where he says you've lied to the Holy Spirit. Then he says, in, in, almost in the same breath, you've not lied uh, unto men, but you've lied to God. In other words, he's calling the Holy Spirit God there. So, and you got those other references in John 14 and 16 by Jesus about another comforter will come to you, uh, giving credence to the the whole biblical idea that the Holy Spirit is God. And for anyone that wants more information on this, please contact our ministry. We have plenty of written material. We've got videos, tapes. We've got a wealth of information to substantiate this thing. So uh, the, the scriptures definitely prove that. And Steve, to get you in the act here, just briefly, uh, one of uh, Badawi's points about these councils and things is they created this doctrine that people believe in that Jesus is God mm -hmm. and the Trinity uh, the Holy Spirit being God and so forth, uh, from uh, the Council of Nicaea in 325. Okay. That it all, it all started, all this confusion started to come along with these councils coming along, coming up with these crazy ideas like the Trinity and Jesus being mm -hmm. God when, when that was not true. Okay, well, first of all, one thing a lot of people may not know is, is that the Nicene Creed, uh, it, was, it was created at Nicaea, but it wasn't invented from scratch. Uh, uh, it was actually just a slight emendation of what was called the Old Creed of Jerusalem. And it's also uh, very similar to another creed called the Creed of Caesarea. And this is according to the uh, long series of Apostolic Fathers of Volume 7, page 524. But even going back before these, these creeds, going to the early church fathers, you have Ignatius who died 107 or 106 AD, and he, talk, he said about Jesus, Look for him that is above the times, him who is not times. 
Him who is invisible, him who for our sakes became visible, him who is impalpable, which means beyond touch, him who is impassable, beyond passion, him who for our sakes suffered, who endured everything uh, in every way for our sakes. And this was through his letter in Polycarp, uh, chapter 3. And so he has an extremely high view of, of, of Jesus, talking about uh, Jesus was not in time, and Jesus was in time, and Jesus was not visible, and he became visible. Um, just to show how that, he didn't actually use the word Trinity, but he had the part of the concept there. The very beginnings of the Christian church, and find that, no, they were they were believing that Jesus was God from the very beginning, from John twenty twenty eight, where Thomas falls down at Jesus' feet and he says to Jesus, "My Lord and my God." Right. And so, there the, the evidence is there. We we could go on uh, with all this, but like I say, to save time, anyone that needs more information, contact our ministry. Get the written literature. Uh, we have many other uh, videos and things that deal with this topic in much more detail than we plan to do here. So, uh, yeah, wait, 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 okay. you know, One more thing about the councils, though, is that the councils were not to create doctrine. The councils were to guard against uh, heresy and false doctrine. Now, so they met together and, and, and in the times of the early of the early church and later and resolve this now you're, in, you're saying they're not making innovations like Dr. no they're not making innovations they're regarding that now in islam we could talk we can show the same things except we don't show councils we have different names like siphon and karbala and these aren't councils these are bat are battles to where ali gets killed uh, 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 ali's son um uh hussein gets killed and so they uh basically handled their differences just by killing the opposite side rather than discussing them and, and let's say in some cases exiling the heretics in Christianity, they just kill Ali and his sons. So frankly, I think that our way of dealing with heresy is a, is a little more uh, <laughs> a, a milder than killing the descendants of the prophets. That's right, that's right. And, and as far as those other points about the battle we made uh, about uh, Jesus never forgave anybody's sins, well, all you have to do is read Mark chapter 2, verses 5 through 13, you find Jesus forgiving people's sins right there. Only God can forgive sins. Everybody knows that, but Jesus was forgiving sins because he is God. So Badawi leaves that out conveniently. And as far as the Crusaders, we've said this in other programs, we agree the Crusaders were just as bad as the people they claimed to be ungodly. They were violating what God says. And so to use hypocrites to say that the Bible's not true or something like that doesn't prove a thing. You know, uh, I remember going to a, a speech by Madeline Murray O'Hare at UT one time, and uh, she was saying, you can't believe the Bible because the church is full of hypocrites. But see, there's a logical fallacy in that. Just because there's a bunch of hypocrites everywhere doesn't mean that the Bible itself is not true. So, uh, you know, the whole lo logic of that just doesn't work when it comes to the Crusaders and so forth like that. I'll say, well, let's go on to the next tape, tape 14. He's, the title is Later Unitarians. He brings up uh, Servetus and Francis David. Point A, Badawi talks about the Spanish Inquisition and how it forced people to worship the Trinity. B, Badawi here gives a very, from my perspective, very biased and sympathetic uh, sob story about the anti-Trinitarian Servetus and his execution. And he spends a lot of time on that. C, Badawi states that Trinitarians quote, really believe in three gods, end quote. D, Badawi says the Trinity is impossible, and the Bible does not support it. E, Badawi says a non-Trinitarian named Francis David from the 1500s AD won all his debates and said Trinitarians believed in three or four gods. And F, Badawi says Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons are Christians. So, uh, what we have here again, and we've already addressed this, uh, just to start from the back and move backwards, uh, the, the last one he makes about Jehovah's Witnesses and, 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 and Mormons are Christians. Well, as we've stated in other shows, that's like saying a, uh, a, a Gulat Muslim who believes in a, a, a trinity of uh, Allah, Ali, and pick your, pick your other one, like Muhammad, uh, that would be a true Muslim. A Sunni Muslim would never accept that. So, what, what Badawi is constantly doing is he's generalizing anybody that even claims some kind of semblance to Christianity or the Bible, well, they're Christians. But he wouldn't expect us to do that to Muslims. So you get one of these way out uh, uh, Sufi Muslims that's buying into Rumi, I, I guess, mm -hmm. or some of these other guys. Uh, he wouldn't accept that. But yet he does the same thing to Christians and try to lump them all together, even when they have widely divergent views. Mormons believe there are going to be millions of gods, and they're going to be a god themselves. 
uh, Jehovah's Witnesses have a totally set of different beliefs in here. Uh, they don't, they're not considered to be true Christians by the uh, Christian church. So Battleway thinks it's all right to make that accusation against Christians, but he would never accept it if we were to turn it around on him and bring up some of these Muslim groups that he would not accept as Muslims. And then as we get into some of these, these other things, I'd like to mention, since he spent so much time on Servetus, uh, we're going to play a little tape clip here of, of, uh, of someone we highly respect, James White. He uh, is from director of Alpha and Omega Ministries, and he did a debate with a uh, person who, uh, one that's Pentecostal, James Saban, uh, one that's Pentecostal, who uh, gave almost in that debate a similar sob story like Dr. Battle did. And James White had a great refutation to it. So we're going to listen to a clip of James White dealing with this Servetus issue, and then we'll be right back. Now, much was said, and I teach church history once in a while, and so I was somewhat antsy because I, in fact, at one point uh, went to uh, the Phoenix Public Library and read every book in the library that made men any mention whatsoever to Miguel Cervantes. So the story that you heard, I am very, very, very familiar with. I'd just like to mention briefly a few things that didn't get mentioned. For for example, the fact that John Calvin risked his life to meet Servetus in Paris many years before the events described to you, Servetus didn't show up. Also not mentioned was the fact that Calvin tried to reason with Servetus in the correspondence once he figured out that Villanueva was actually Servetus. It was not mentioned that Servetus sent Calvin's institutes, which Calvin had sent to him, back to him with rude insults written in the margins. Neither was it mentioned that it took Calvin's friends a long time to coerce him into giving the information to the Roman Catholic authorities as to who Villanueva actually was. It did not mention that Servetus was condemned by the Inquisition and escaped only the night before his execution by burning by the Roman Catholic Inquisition. In fact, they burned him in effigy the next day. Neither was it mentioned that Servetus tried to get Calvin himself charged with heresy and that Servetus aligned himself with Calvin's political foes in Geneva. And neither was it mentioned that the ministers, including Calvin, pled that Servetus be executed in a humane manner and not the way in which it was described and that their pleas were rejected by the council. And neither was it mentioned that Geneva sent to all the other Swiss cantons, they, swent, they sent to Luther's... Uh, uh, successor Melanchthon and they all agreed together that Servetus had to die. That's the danger of sacralism. That's what happens when you place the sword in the hand of the state and give them religious authority. I am a Baptist. Baptists have the longest martyrology of any Protestant denomination in the world. Baptists were killed long after any other group had come to peace with either Rome or the magisterial Protestants. There was a Baptist burned in London in 1611 when the King James Version of the Bible was published. There were Baptists being persecuted well into the 17th century and the 18th century. And so I know the danger of the state church, but I stand before you presenting to you the doctrine of the Trinity, not on the authority of the state church. I presented to you the doctrine of the Trinity based upon the exegesis of the text of Scripture. And that must be where any person who loves God's truth goes. Well, uh, I think James took care of Servetus pretty clearly. Uh, the, the, the history's there, the study's there, and uh, y'all can easily check into that. Uh, just going with sob stories and emotionalism stories does not prove your case. Yeah, if I can bring up ten guys that were wrong for something, uh, you know, that was not right, that still uh, doesn't prove this other point about is the Trinity true or not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what does the Bible say? Just because this guy got ripped off and got burned at the stake or something, does that mean the Bible's not teaching the Trinity? You know, it, it just it's it, it, there's no logical consistency there. So coming up with sob stories and emotionalism doesn't prove anything. Okay, and then with that, Badaway goes on about saying, and and I've said it in other shows. Battery will not accept what the Christians tell them. They, the Christians say we believe in one God, and within the nature of the one God, there's three eternally distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But see, Battery and his champions like Francis David, he, he just won't accept it. He says, no, what they really are doing is believing in three different gods. And see, he's denying us 
he, he's setting up a straw man. He's, he's actually making us, uh, he's putting into our mouths something we don't believe. I don't believe in three gods. <laughs> or four, like Frank, this guy Francis David, he quotes, says. And he also says this Francis David won all his debates. Well, you know, I could just go around saying I've won all my debates. That, and of course, that's debatable. <laughs> but uh, the problem is you can make claims and statements, but that doesn't prove your point. And for Battlewee to go around saying Christians believe in three gods, when any true born-again Christian will tell you, no, that's not true, I believe in one God, within the nature of the one essence of God are revealed from the Scripture three eternally distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But see, Battlewee just will not accept what we're telling them we believe. But he would get mad at us if we started to put words in his mouth and tell him things that he's supposed to believe when he really doesn't believe it. One last word about Servetus. Servetus was unfortunately burned. But if we want to swap sob stories, Muhammad cut off people's limbs, burned out their eyes, and made them die of thirst. See Bukhari 9, 117, 6, 198 prior, as well as Fiqh Osuna, volume 1, page 133. Sahith Muslim, volume 1, Page 315 speaks of burning down the houses of people who miss prayer. Al-Hakim, an insane Muslim caliph who, emulating Nero, burned down the entire Jewish quarter in Cairo. Okay, let's go to the next section then. This will be uh, tape number 15 by Madeline. There's a lot of material here. I'll try to read it rapidly, and uh, then we'll try to deal with the high points and, and move on. Uh, take 15, later Unitarians, he's just bringing up uh, uh, Sozini, Socinius, and John Brittle. Uh, point A, Badawi says the Trinity doctrine is a result of pagan philosophy. B, Badawi says there is no evidence in the Bible that Jesus is divine. C, Badawi relates the lives and struggles of Socinius, who in Badawi's uh, eyes were heroes fighting against, quote, innovations, end quote, in uh, Christian doctrine. They lived around 1605 A.D., but one wonders why Badawi quotes these non-Muslims almost a thousand years after Muhammad. D. Badawi says that these champions fought against the idea of Jesus' death atoning for sins. Some of their arguments were as follows, which Badawi lists in his tapes. Uh, one, Jesus, a mere man, could not die and atone for all the sins of all the masses of humans on earth. Two, if Jesus died for sins, then everyone is okay and does not need to obey God's commands. Three, if Jesus paid the debt owed to God, then God has no authority over man for anything because the debt has already been paid by Jesus. Four, Jesus is not a word made flesh and did not exist before he was created and later simply received revelation from his creator. E, Badawi says the official Christian church could not refute so, you know, these, these two guys' arguments with scripture or logical arguments uh, but simply condemn them as heretics. F. Badawi says the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. G. Badawi praises the anti-Trinitarian John Brittle, who uh, is around 1662, and gives some of Brittle's arguments against the Holy Spirit being God, such as, one, the Old Testament says the Holy Spirit is given by God, therefore the Holy Spirit is distinct from God, and therefore cannot be God. Two, to talk of difference of being, that's essence, and person in the nature of God is to talk of God impersonally. And since God is a person, this is impossible. Three, the scripture says the Holy Spirit only speaks what he hears from God, John 16, 13, and therefore cannot be God. Four, in John 16, 14, he says the Holy Spirit receives and therefore cannot be God. Five, anyone that is sent by another cannot be God. Six, the Holy Spirit is a gift and therefore cannot be God. Seven, the Holy Spirit prays and therefore cannot be divine. Eight, anyone who has a will independent of God cannot be God. And also H, Badawi says no one was ever able to refute Brittle on these points. So uh, it looks like uh, we're up against a, an impossible task here, Steve, because Brittle on these points I just listed was never able to, no one's been able to ever refute this guy. On these, well, these according, to, according to Badawi, but actually answers for all these things were, were done even by, by early Christians. 
Result of pagan philosophy? Hellenistic pagan philosophy contained an almost endless variety of combinations of religion and philosophy. Badawi argues that modern Christian doctrine is a result of this. One major flaw in this line of reasoning is early Christianity's uncompromising exclusiveness. There is only one God, it taught. Those who worship any other but the true God are lost. There is only one mediator between God and man, Jesus Christ. Any who seek to approach the Father in any other way are lost. There is only one ground of human salvation, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those who seek redemption in any other way will perish. Thus, evidence furnished by the New Testament suggests that early Christianity was an exception to the syncretism and inclusiveness of the Hellenistic age. Despite the evidence of the Trinity, threeness, in the Bible given earlier, Badawi's theory is disingenuous, as many of Muhammad's teachings are also said to be derived from pagan philosophy. For example, the Quran even mentions the daughters of Allah. Jesus was no mere man. Jesus was God in the flesh, the God-man. The biblical evidence is overwhelming. Jesus is God, John 20, 28, John 1, 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Titus 2, 13. Jesus is the same nature as God, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Jesus has the fullness of God, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19. Jesus was specifically prayed to, Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Jesus accepted worship. Matthew chapter 2 verse 2, Matthew chapter 8 verse 2, Matthew 14, 33, 28, 17, 29, 9, Luke chapter 24 verse 52, and John 9, 38. Jesus forgave sins only God could forgive. Matthew chapter 9 verses 2 through 6, Mark chapter 2 verses 5 through 12, and Luke chapter 5, 20 through 23, Luke 7, 48 through 50. Jesus said he existed before the world began, John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus never said he was innocent of claiming to be God, John chapter 10, verse 33, and John 20, 28. Sozini and Socinius heroes? These men would be considered heretics, or worse, for their views of Jesus by Muslims also. Their doctrinal views of Jesus differ greatly with the Muslim view of Jesus. Does this mean they are qualified to be, quote, heroes, end quote, since they deny what Muhammad said about Jesus? Badawi's quoting of invalid arguments. But if Jesus were not just a mere man, but also God, then Badawi's argument has an invalid presupposition. All genuine Christians believe that Jesus' death for all types of people, does not give salvation to those who reject God's grace. Jesus paid the price in full for sins committed by those saved through his shed blood. That payment is not applied to those who reject Christ and his atonement. Badawi did say earlier that Jesus was a word from Allah. That's from his tape number five in this series, Comparative Christology number one. Surah 3.45 and Surah 4.171 from the Quran and Sahith Muslim 1.22 from the Hadith state that Jesus was a, quote, word, end quote, from Allah. Who first taught Jesus is God? Modern Christians take no credit for being the first to show from the Bible that Jesus is God because apart from the Bible, Ignatius, Irenaeus, Polycarp, Tertullian, Novatian, Hippolytus, and other early Christian church fathers already stated this fact 1,700 to 1,900 years ago. The Holy Spirit is Gabriel or a force? Like Badawi, many Muslims consider the Holy Spirit and Gabriel to be the same. This is not universal, though, because the Quran does not really explain the Holy Spirit. Yet in the next tape, point C, 
Badawi states that Unitarians who taught the Holy Spirit as just a force had the original apostolic teaching. Therefore, does Badawi believe, A, like many Muslims, that the Holy Spirit is Gabriel, B, the Unitarians had the original apostolic teaching that the Holy Spirit is a force, or C, he is just trying to say anything to attack the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. Brittle simple arguments. Note that arguments 1 through 6 by Brittle are restriction arguments. Almighty God, the Holy Spirit, is restricted from being God because the Holy Spirit has some attribute, according to Brittle. Brittle never gave the basis for who or what restricted the omnipotent God from this. 7. There is communication of feelings and thoughts among the Trinity. And whether you call it prayer, interceding, or something else, Brittle's arguments here, with Badawi's blessings, are simply semantics. Semantic gymnastics in redefinition do not win arguments. 8. The Holy Spirit does not have an independent, separate will from God. Rather, the Father, Son, and Spirit are distinct, but not separate. 9. We only quickly outlined a refutation of Brittle here, because most good books on the Trinity have already refuted him. Contact our ministry for more resources on this subject. What would you say about that passage where Jesus talks about the unpardonable sin in Matthew chapter 12? He says, uh, sins against the, my father and me can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness, neither in this life or the next. Well, what, what, what I would say is blasphemy is against the Son of Man could be forgiven, but, but what, the, what, the, what the Pharisees had done just prior to that is that they had seen Jesus' miracle done by, you know, with, with miraculous power, and they had attributed you know, knowingly attributed God's miraculous power to Satan. Mm -hmm. And so I think Jesus had talked, in, in my view, uh, opinion, just, for, just uh, for that type of a sin of somebody who, who, who they knowingly know uh, the truth, they know that, the, that, that this power of the Holy Spirit is from God, and yet they choose to teach and choose to show that this power is Satan. And, and in that case, uh, no one can come to God throughout the Holy, without the Holy Spirit. And if someone, you know, continually and deliberately says, you know, I don't want the Holy Spirit to have any influence in my life, then eventually the Holy Spirit says, okay. In fact, uh, just to read that passage for clarification, Matthew 12, 31 and 32, Jesus speaking, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, as Steve just clarified a minute ago, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So, if the Holy Spirit is not God, <laughs> and he's the angel Gabriel, let's say, or if he's, like the Muslims say, or if he's a power beam like the Jehovah's Witness say, or he's just an impersonal force like New Age or whatever. If he's not God, why would Jesus say something like, this is an unpardonable sin when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit? I mean, that, to me, that would prove the deity of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Being, and how do you blaspheme something that's not, that, that's not personal? That's not personal. That, that, that's the point. If, if, can, I, can you blaspheme this lamp over here? Can, 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 can you even <laughs> blaspheme a person? Well, the person isn't God. You that's know, true. So, you know. He's making the error of not understanding what the doctrine of the Trinity is teaching at all. And mm -hmm. therefore, he makes a category error you know, along but, those but, lines. But, but it seems like that, that, that what's being done in, in all these arguments is putting these restrictions on God. Now, these restrictions are not found in Scripture. Uh, they're not found anywhere else except Riddle's mind. It's like, well, you know, certain things that I see can't be a certain way. Therefore, God, who's greater than all this, can't, can't be a certain right. way. He's limiting God and what God can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe when every place where it says God here, you really ought to say Riddle's God, <laughs> not, not the real God. And that's exactly a good point on that. Well, let's go to tape 16. I think, uh, I think we've dealt with his irrefutable arguments, which uh, logically don't make any sense. But anyway... Uh, Tape 16, Later Unitarians, 
And he, he mentions uh, Emlyn, Lindsay, and Joseph Priestley. And going down the list here to finish this tape series, Badawi continues to praise Unitarians who, who attack Christian dogmas. Badawi also brings up Matthew 19, 16 through 17 about uh, there's none good but God. But point B, Badawi brings up John 14, 28, my father is greater than I and says Jesus cannot be God. C, Badawi says the late 18th century saw these Unitarians of which Lindsay said the Holy Ghost was just a force and not a personality. And Badawi claims that this was original apostolic teaching. D. Badawi continues to argue that Jesus cannot be God as if he were reading from a Jehovah's Witness cookbook. Wait, 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 hold on. If, if the original apostles taught the Holy Spirit was a force and Muslims taught, think the Holy Spirit's Gabriel, then Badawi says well, that, Badawi that, would, that, that the Muslims are wrong? Well, Bad, right. Well, Badawi would disagree with him anyway. No, 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 no. It, 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 well, uh, I know what you're it, saying. But, but if Badawi says that the original apostles said the Holy Spirit was a force, Mm -hmm. And if Muslims say the Holy Spirit is a being, Gabriel, yes, is the then Badawi Gabriel. is saying that the Muslim world is all wrong here. Well, that's true. If he's going to accept that it was really true, it's what the original apostolic You know, teaching. that's a good point. You know, and I miss that. You caught it. Mm -hmm. That's why two heads are better than one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's a very good point because he does mention that. He's saying that, that this was more the original teaching that the Holy Spirit was just a force. But, of course, in Islamic teaching... The Holy Spirit is, according to Muslim understanding, this angel Gabriel, which came to Muhammad and had him prophesy the words of Allah. So if he's automatically now saying that this stuff uh, would have to relate to the angel, I would say, mm -hmm. if, uh, or else that's been corrupted too. So he's got problems there. He's got problems there. But what, what, well, it's not that, but, but you know, wherever in the Hadith or, or you know, where, uh, in the Quran, it, it, it mentions the Holy Spirit, and the interpretation of most Muslims is Gabriel. And so, you know, he's got pretty major problems. Oh, yeah, there. he's got major problems. Well, let's finish this list and, and finish this off. Move on. Okay, uh, as I at point E, Badawi says that outside of John 1 1, 1 1 and verse 14, the Bible never shows Jesus to be God. F, Badawi claims that Unitarianism is true Christianity, not Trinity. G, Badawi says that Christian theology is mixed with heathen philosophy, particularly the Greek ideas of logos. And H, Badawi's arguments are constantly dependent on a Unitarian concept of thought only, with no accommodation whatsoever for a Trinitarian line of reasoning on any issue. None good but God. Badawi correctly observes that Jesus was careful in his use of the word good, yet Jesus explicitly calls himself the Good Shepherd in John chapter 10 verse 11. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 and 17, and Mark chapter 10, verse 18, where the man lightly called Jesus good teacher, Jesus only questioned why the man acknowledged Jesus was called good. Jesus never denied he was good or that he was God. In the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.21, Hebrews 4.15, and 1 Peter 1.18 and 19 say that Jesus had no sin. Jesus even asked in John 8:46a, "Can any of you prove me guilty of sin?" The Muslim hadith say Jesus was untouched by sin. In Sahih Muslim 4, 58:37, page 1261, Bukhari 4, 641, page 426, and Bukhari 4, 506, page 324. My Father is greater than I. In John 14:28, in many ways the Father was greater than Jesus on earth. Remember, Jesus had voluntarily emptied himself of much of his divine glory. That's found in Philippians chapter 2. Even in heaven, the Father and Jesus have different roles. John 17. The closest analog we can observe to this is that of a father and son relationship on earth. Jesus is not saying the Father is better, essence of nature, than he is, but that his role on earth is different than the Father's. Dr. Badawi claims that early Christianity, apostolic times, taught that the Holy Spirit was just a force. Badawi needs to find an apostle or a disciple of an apostle that said that. We have both apostles, such as John and Paul, 
and disciples of the apostle, Ignatius, etc., that say otherwise. Not only does the Bible and early Christian writing show the worship of Jesus as God, but even a hostile, second century, close to apostolic times, pagan writer, Lucian, the satirist, attest to this fact. Lucian, second century satirist, even this enemy of Christianity said, quote, The Christians, you know, worship a man to this day, the distinguished personage who introduced their novel rites and was crucified on that account. You see, these misguided creatures, end quote, from his Death of Peregrine 11. Just a force? Many people, not only Muslims, tend to believe any argument, no matter how little proof is given, if it coincides with what they already believe. However, these same people demand a great burden of proof for arguments that have a conclusion they disagree with. One mark of being objective is to require the same level of evidence for arguments both pro and con against a given position. It must be mentioned, though, that most Muslims would call Badawi wrong here. They believe the Holy Spirit is the Archangel Gabriel, not an impersonal force similar to Luke Skywalker's Star Wars version. Quote, Outside of John 1.1 1, 1 and verse 14, the Bible never shows Jesus to be God, end quote. Dr. Badawi proves from his own argumentation here that the Bible teaches that Jesus is God. Badawi simply does not believe what the Bible teaches and grasps any straw he can to attack biblical teaching that he does not agree with. Is Dr. Badawi converting to Unitarianism? Unitarians believe all religions lead to God, which the vast majority of Muslims deny. Badawi uses Unitarians to attack Bible teachings he does not like. At the same time, he remains silent about Unitarian doctrines he or the Islamic faith would disagree with. Would Dr. Badawi agree that original apostolic teachings declared that all religions lead to God? The Greek word logos was a technical term used prominently in several philosophical systems that antedate Christianity. Its philosophic use goes back to Heraclitus, about 500 BC. It was then used by the Stoics, some of whom influenced Philo, the Jewish philosopher of Alexandria. It was probably inevitable that some would conclude that the appearance of logos in John 1.1, 1, 1, or biblical texts such as Hebrews, evidences the influence of these earlier uses. One of the central and most familiar tenets of Platonism was its disparagement of this earthly world in comparison with the ideal world of rational forms. Philo shared Plato's disregard for the corporeal, sensible world. The writer of Hebrews did not do so, or the Apostle John, for that matter. The Logos mediator of Hebrews is not Philo's metaphysical abstraction, but a specific, individual, historical person. Philo's philosophical system is totally incompatible with the notion of the Incarnation. The description in Hebrews of Jesus' compassion for his brethren is incompatible with Philo's view of the emotions. Philo's logos could never be described as Hebrews pictures Jesus as suffering, being tempted to sin, or dying. These references are found in the Gospel and the Greeks, pages 70, 90 through 93. Dr. Badawi is astounding. The concept of Jesus being a, the, quote, word, is also in the Quran, Surah 345, 4171. If the Logos doctrine were pagan philosophy, Dr. Badawi would be teaching the Quran has been mixed with pagan philosophy also. In fact, Badawi's arguments, rather than being exclusively Muslim, are constantly dependent on a Christian Unitarian concept of thought.
And as I mentioned, Battery brings up almost a Jehovah's Witness cookbook to attack the deity of Christ, that Jesus is not God. We have, definite, we, we, we have refutations to all that in our literature that you are free to call or write us about. Because of the limitations of television, we don't have time to go into every last detail on this, and we've already spent a lot of, a lot of time dealing with it already. But uh, basically, all these arguments are fall, uh, fallacious. They can be dealt with from the, from the text of the Bible itself. And, he, and what's funny to me is Badawi himself admits there's Bible verses like John 1.1 1, 1 and verse 14 that say Jesus is God. But see, his problem is he's not going to accept any pa passage that says Jesus is God, and it doesn't count. And then he looks at other passages and tries to twist them to say the opposite. So to me, that's not that's rather disingenuous because to uh, to take some verses and then and, 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 and turn a blind eye to others and then make claims like, well, the Bible never says, and in the context, the Bible doesn't teach any of this stuff. To me, is absolutely ludicrous. What if I did that to the to the Quran? What if I just take a Quran and and anything I want to believe? A preconceived notion, a thire, uh, as by the way we would say, a prior theological commitment. <laughs> what if I just go to the Quran and just believe, you know, take any passages out of there I want to believe and then forget the rest and make it say what I want it to say? Well, that's exactly what Battle is doing with the Bible, and it doesn't work at all. Any, any final comments on any of this before uh, yeah, we move yeah, to the if, next If, if, if Battle thinks the only verses in the Bible, uh, John 1, 1 and 14, so Jesus is God. Let me give, uh, there are lots of others. I'll just give one other, though. Uh, John twenty twenty eight. Thomas says to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus says to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. So Thomas is believing what Jesus intends for him to believe here. And it says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So uh, just in John, those are two. And we go through Hebrews and Revelation and, 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 and other places, but we're talking about the Bible, so don't substitute some other thing on us and say, oh, that, you know, that wasn't in that. But that's just one other verse. At least, you know, maybe in the future, bad we can say, at least he, you ought to say there are at least two, but, but actually there are really many more than that, even Colossians exactly. and everything else. Uh, any last quick comment before I sign us off? Well, just that on, for anybody, Muslim, non-Muslim, looking at the Trinity, I guess, why don't you pray to God and just say, God, God, I'm going to let you be whatever you are. I'm not going to force you to be a certain way or another way. Force you to be Trinity or not a Trinity, but just read the scriptures for yourself and say, God can be a Trinity, God could not be a Trinity, and just read from scriptures and find out what God really is. And you'll find out that, that the Trinity is consistent with scripture, but don't restrict God and say he has to be a certain way. Let him reveal to you the way he really is in his word. And you don't have to make phony arguments up about what God has said either. Just, mm -hmm. just go with what God says and, 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 and trust and believe in him. Okay, with that said, uh, I'd like to offer our free newsletter to anyone that uh, would be interested. Just call or write. The, our phone number and address are at the end of the program. We also have our websites, one uh, dealing with the Islam. So uh, check that website address out along with our regular website. And uh, we also have free literature dealing with Islam or other religions. Uh, free for the asking. We don't do this for money, that's for sure. So anyway, uh, thank you for being with us. I'm Larry Wessels with Steve Morrison for Christian Answers. Join us again next time. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, no man comes to the Father except by him. And it wasn't a Greek philosopher that said that. That was Jesus himself. Amen. God bless you all.